Now for a look at the Fed rates, rate, Fed's rate path heading into 2024. Let's welcome former Federal Reserve Vice Chair Roger Ferguson. He's former president and CEO of TIAA and now a CNBC contributor. Thanks for joining us, Roger. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. Nice to be here. Um, you know, Roger, I was OK kind of not dismissing but but leaning against the market um, pricing for uh, uh, deep rate cuts next year, beginning in March. But then along comes, you know, Goldman Sachs, who I consider to be a little bit more considered about their forecast and maybe not quite so ready to get swept up into the mania of it all. Here's what they wrote yesterday. We expect three consecutive 25 basis point cuts in March, May and June, followed by one cut per quarter until the Fed funds rate reaches three and a quarter to three and a half percent in 2025 Q3. Now, if the unflappable Ferguson gets on board with this, I'm ready to uh, to, to, to bet everything on it. Where, where are you at, Roger? Is, is you think Goldman is now swept up in the mania, or is this a reasonable, considered position here? Um, I think it's a little bit feeding into the market excitement. So uh -huh. I think the fundamentals of the economy have to be the first thing you look at. So, yes, inflation has come down you know, quite nicely. Looks as though uh, the 2 percent is well within range. That's very, very good news for those who are expecting a series of cuts. Having said that, the economy itself is still strong and is withstanding, you know, some of these uh, interest rates as they stand today. Um, we saw what looks like a very strong holiday selling season. The numbers are coming, coming wrong, uh, relatively strongly. Uh, the Atlanta Fed's GDP now forecast is looking at a GDP of roughly 2.3 percent, you know, right now. And we already have a significant loosening in financial conditions, all of which I think are driving some forward momentum that might create a sense in the Fed that, well, let's go maybe a little bit more slowly. We don't need to add more fuel to the fire, so to speak, by having, you know, six rate cuts of the type that we talked about. So I'm still, it's a close call, I will admit that. I'm still in the view that the Fed has a preference, not a strong preference, but a preference towards uh, initiating the cuts towards the second half of the year. Uh, but it is, it is a, a strong call, so I will admit that there's a lot of noise and some arguments on the other side. I, right now, I'm still in the, well, let's see, let's, I think June more likely, unless something surprising occurs. Roger, you've been there in, the, in, 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 in office when the Fed has been cutting interest rates. What does it take for you to be comfortable that this is the right call? Look, I think for this Fed, the first thing is what they've said. Is that inflation definitely down at the 2 percent target? If you look at the last annual numbers, you'd say, oh, it's slightly above that, maybe at a number that starts with 3 if you look at 12 months. But if you annualize the 6-month uh, and the 3-month numbers, you might get to be a bit more comfortable. So I think they want to be highly confident of that. The last thing they want is to see this pick up again. You know, the second thing I think that is going to drive it is this question of financial conditions. You know, obviously the markets are ahead of them a little bit. You know, they've attempted to push back verbally. I think there's a little bit of concern, well, maybe if we actually start to validate, the financial conditions get easier and easier more quickly, uh, and that, that's a risk as well. So I think at this stage, you know, they are within a hair's breadth of getting that um, much-desired soft landing. And I think they think they have room to be maybe a little more cautious than the markets do right now and some incentive to be more cautious so as not to feed, you know, the frenzy, so to speak, and get things uh, moving even further.